بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. So in this video, I wanted to actually show the uniqueness of the Arabic language and specifically about the characteristics of letters and when they're included in words and the meanings that they give to words. We're talking about the letter Sheen. There's a unique characteristic of this letter, which is called in Arabic, a tafashi, which means a spreading sound. So Sheen is pronounced as sh. So when you, it's like when you tell somebody to be quiet, you say sh. That's the sheen. And the definition of this characteristic is to pronounce a letter with the filling of the mouth with air allowing the sound to spread greatly over the mouth. Now to demonstrate this, put your hand next to your mouth and pronounce this letter sh. And you can actually feel the air flow in all directions. Now it's quite interesting because words that possess this letter and specifically the first radical possess the meaning of spreading and with spreading comes other meanings such as branching and diversity and things like that and we'll, we'll get an understanding of this inshallah with some, some examples so there are some words and they all start with the letter sheen so first of all we have a tree shajara and we know a shajara it spreads as it grows its branches spread out similarly with hair hair is something that, that's all over the body specifically all over your head so it's something that spreads out next word we have is shia shia is a group or a sect so you have the main body and then from this body you have groups that come out of it and there's a spreading or a diversity associated with that and finally we have shams is a source of light and heat which is spread all over the world now there's um, some more examples I want to show the word shirk and shukr so shirk is association of partners so associating partners with something else in the case of we're talking about shirk in regards to worship it's talking about setting up partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that means worshipping others besides Allah there are many things mentioned in the Quran that one can associate so it's very diverse it could be one's own desires it could be another person it could be one's uh, tribal allegiance it could be one's own thoughts so shirk is a spreading out and diversity and um, similarly we have the word shukr now if you notice between shukr and shirk there's an another relationship which is that these two letters the ra and the kaf both occur but they're opposite so when this happens in Arabic there's a related meaning in this case it's talking about opposites now shukr what does that have to do with spreading out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ and remember when your Lord proclaimed if you are grateful I will surely increase you in favor he's, he's swearing an oath and there's emphasis there that most certainly that he will increase one who shows thanks and gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so shukr leads to increase the spreading of this good throughout one's life in both this life and the next so it's it's quite important to know that shukr here is not just with the tongue it's with one's actions and with everything that Allah SWT has given one that Allah presents an example and then he gives the two examples the first one is rajulan فيه شركاء ومتشاكسون. That it's the example, the similitude of the example is of a 
it's Rajul, here Rajul is used as a slave, meaning a slave. Because in actual fact, it's not only slaves who are slaves, but everybody. We are all slaves to something. So who are we slaves to? That's the question. A Rajul that is owned by the word Shuraka, it's a plural of Sharik. Here it's partners. So he is a slave to multiple masters. And then describes the shuraka as mutashati suna. And this is a very important word. This is the actual word that I want to highlight. Now, th those masters are quarreling and arguing with one another. So just imagine you're a slave and you want to take an order from this person and this person and this person. But they're all quarreling with one another. One is saying to do this, the other is saying to do that. So you're going to be very confused and you're going to have a lot of anxiety. Who are you going to please? So that's the, the example that Allah Subh'ala portrays here. And obviously this is of one who takes others besides Allah Subh'ala. So that's the example of the slave with multiple masters. Then we have وَرَجُلًا سَلَمًا لِرَجُلٍ so, And we have a man that is free and exclusively belongs to one man. So you have one slave and he is just out to please and to follow the orders of this particular master, one master. It's interesting that the word Allah uses is Salaman, the same root where Islam comes from. And we know that Islam is the religion of peace and submission. And that's what one gets, is when, he's, when he has one master, then all his attention is going to be directed towards this person here. This example he's talking about, Worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worshipping Him alone. And that's where peace lies in. And then it says, Hal yastawiyani mathada. Do both of these, Rajul, the first one and the second one, can you compare them both? Are they equal in comparison? Also, it's telling us to think about this. Are they equal? Obviously not. Who do you want to be if you had a choice to be one or the other? Because in actual fact, we're either in the first category or the second category. There is no third category. And then it says, Alhamdulillah. But most of them do not know. So may Allah make us of those of His sincere slaves. I mean, finally, um, I said that I was going to talk about the word Mutashaki soon. This here. Yeah. So, so Allah described these shuraka these partners that one is trying to follow orders of as mutashaki soon that they are quarreling and arguing with one another now why did Allah SWT use this word as opposed to other words because there are other words in Arabic which mean arguing and quarreling for example the words tujadilun um, to argue and tuhajun to argue as well um, tumarun also means to argue so there's actually a few words that mean arguing in Arabic but it comes from the three layer root which is you have the sheen um, and you have the calf and you have the seen notice the sheen in the beginning and interestingly enough if you go to the classical dictionaries you won't find this in modern day dictionaries but in the classical dictionaries it's talking about arguing over a number of things. These arguments are spread about many, many different aspects. So imagine the anxiety and stress and worries that this person is going to have. Who is he going to follow? What's he going to do? Where does he start? And the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned this reality in a hadith. He said that he who makes Allah his one worry in this life, his one aim and desire and worry in this life, that he will remove all other worries. So he won't be worried about this world in the slightest. However, somebody who makes this world his desire, by doing this, he turns away from Asma Ta'ala. Allah will make his life full of worries. And this is reality. We see this today. People who chase after this world, the more they are attached to it, the more they have of this world, the more worries they have. 
وصلى سيد محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم